Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my September reading wrap up. I had such a good month. I feel like I read a lot of anticipated books that I wanted to read, a lot of books that I've been holding off for a while. There's a lot of good books. I mean, there's some in there that weren't my favorite, but obviously we're gonna get into that. So I read 12 books this month. I think four were romance, one was like a mystery YA, and then all of the other seven ones were fantasies, either like fantasy romance. I mean, a majority are just fantasy romances. I don't really read fantasies that aren't romances. Majority, as you can see, are fantasies. I've been in such a fantasy mood. Something about them has just been so good to me. I love them. It just feels right to be reading them in this time, and I'm just obsessed. So, obviously, we're gonna go through everything that I read, my ratings, my reviews, how I felt. I'm excited, but first, thank you, Book of the Month, for sponsoring today's video. I'm so excited about these picks. I love Book of the Month. If you haven't heard of them, if you haven't been here before, and you don't know what Book of the Month is, it's a subscription service, and their mission is to help readers discover books that they love or new books to love, while also promoting the work of new and emerging authors. So each month, Book of the Month offers new selections of books. You have a few options to choose from. So they cut the clutter, they save members time, and make it easier to decide and choose the books that you want to read that month. Like I said, they focus on new and emerging authors, which I love so much. Like I found some of my favorite books through Book of the Month and the new authors that they show you and that they give on the website. Their monthly cycle to product pages to this amazing blue box that I love getting in the mail is just optimized to celebrate books and reading, which I love so much. And one of the best parts is they offer the best price on new release hardcover fiction. You guys can get your first book for just five dollars with the code spooky it'll be on the screen and in the description if you guys are interested definitely 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 check it out highly recommend they always have the best options and they also have free shipping and a loyalty rewards program so into the books that i chose for october this is the one that i am most excited for like october is spooky season i'm ready to read all of my witchy romances and all the good stuff that give the fall spooky vibes so the first one that i got is the unfortunate side effect of heartbreak and magic by brianne randall look at this cover it is perfect but i'm so excited about this one it says that her first heartbreak jake returns to town after a decade her grandmother is dying and her strange twin brother also returns to town and it says as feelings for jake begin to rekindle and with their grandmother growing sicker by the day sadie faces the last of her heartbreaks and she has to decide is love more important than magic i'm so excited about this one a second chance romance but also like family topics and themes it's gonna be so good so this is definitely on my october tbr and i'm so excited to read it and then the other one i got is actually a mystery thriller called when i'm dead by hannah morrissey i love this cover as well book of the month books that they choose have the best covers this is just so good for like a thriller mystery. The main character is a medical examiner and she's and examining the body of her daughter's best friend and then her daughter goes missing. So there's this whole journey. The main character is obviously the mom and she has to figure out what happened and also if it's similar to what happened to her daughter's best friend. So very interesting. I'm so excited. Again, you guys can use the code spooky for your first book, $5. They have such good options. I love book of the month and thank you book of the month again for sponsoring today's video. First book I read in October was The Brothers Hawthorne by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Same author as The Inheritance Games as The Natural Series, but The Inheritance Games trilogy is its own trilogy like that's completed it's written in avery the main girl's point of view through all three books and then that's completed but you have this kind of like a spin-off of it and it's its own book it's taking place in the same world same characters but like the title says the brothers hawthorne it follows two of the brothers point of views grayson and jameson who are like kind of the main brothers in the trilogy but there's four brothers when i saw this was announced i was so excited i thought we we're gonna get all four brothers point of views my favorite brothers are not even the main ones they're the side ones i think they have such personalities i think they're so interesting their stories are so interesting but you don't get their point of views in here i think i gave this one three stars and i was so excited to read this one because the trilogy was just so much fun and going along with what was happening in that trilogy was just so good but this one just felt flat for me and i think it's because the way this book is so big i think it's like almost 500 pages and i feel like it's such a thick book for what was going on because you follow grayson and jameson the two main brothers but their two point of views have different storylines so you have grayson following what's going on with him and his storyline it's like a mystery that you're following but jameson and he's kind of with avery and they have their own mystery going on so they don't really overlap throughout the book until you get to the last maybe like 30 pages and barely even then like you just follow two separate stories and I felt like that was kind of like a disconnect for me like I didn't really find it entertaining at all like I wanted all the brothers together I wanted all of them together with Avery as well and just like doing their own things exactly how they did in the inheritance games and I know it's like not part of the inheritance games it's a spin-off so it's obviously kind of a different storyline but it's just not what I expected and I think that's why I was kind of bummed out while reading it and I just feel like it dragged on a lot and I wasn't really into the story I didn't really care about the mystery that was going on like it was just a little bit weird to me but it was a good read it was entertaining I love Jennifer Lynn Barnes writing like it was a three-star because I did enjoy it for what it was but the storyline I just
just didn't really love that much. I personally think it could have been two separate books of the two brothers. It could have been a shorter book. Like there was a lot I think could have been done with this to make it I think a little bit more entertaining, a little bit more fun and how I think of the inheritance games. Like it just wasn't how I thought about that. But I will say it's worth it to read this because there's one more book. I think it's the last one but I don't know called The Grandest Game that's coming out and the way that this book ends really sets up so well for that book which made me believe or made me think and feel like this book was kind of written as like a flowing book and like a stepping stone into the grandest game novel because I feel like that one's gonna be really fun and I love the way this ended to set up for that book like I'm excited for the grandest game I feel like this one was kind of like too long and not as entertaining as I hoped for but it was still okay it wasn't as good as I was expecting and I was so excited for this one but that's okay so my most I think anticipated book of the whole entire month I mean there's a few in here that I was really excited to read and get to but this one the most because I've been waiting to read this since 2022 like early 2022 the knock em out trilogy is one of my favorites the first one I remember giving five stars I don't really remember like reading it like I don't remember too much about it but I read it a while ago and it's been like in my head one of my favorite books maybe if I read it now it'd be a little different but I did enjoy it and I remember loving it when I first read it it's grumpy sunshine small town then you get the second one it follows Knox from the first one's brother Nash and then you get Lena who's just a new character kind of introduced in the first one but she's the main character in the second one and then you get to this one which is Lucian and Sloan so Lucian and Sloan are shown throughout the first two books because they're a big found family and they're included in that they're like side characters but they're kind of like main side characters if that makes sense and within the first two books the scenes that you get with them you are so intrigued to know more because you get them bantering with each other but kind of in like not a malicious way but they're like almost like enemies like they have a history with each other and they're always just angry with each other fighting with each other but there's this tension between them and you get it like really well like it is done so well on the side in the first two books so i was excited for this i was excited to see why they're so mad at each other and like what's been going on and like all the tension that i got in that one like i wanted to feel that in this one i was so excited on goodreads i think i gave this a four star but it's really just a three and a half on goodreads you can't really do the half readings as you guys know so it's just basically just a three and a half and that hurts my heart to say because I was expecting to go into this giving it an automatic five like I was so excited the other two books were just so high for me personally and I loved them this fell so flat and it makes me so sad to say because I feel like we got so much tension and so much of them bickering and fighting in the first two books that, like it took so long in this one to like start like a relationship almost or get them to be in like the same scenes like I feel like the romance between the two in this one was on the back burner until like the last hundred pages like I feel like the side plots of like Lucian what was going on with him and like Sloane like separately was on the forefront of the book and even just like the side characters Knox and Naomi from the first book in this one all their friends and everything was more of a main plot throughout the story than their relationship and figuring themselves out you do get flashbacks of what happened to them like in the past because they have like a, a past history and I did enjoy that I enjoyed seeing like what went down between them but I think in like present day I wanted more and we know that they fight like we know that they're angry at each other and we know that they bicker and stuff and I think that took up so much of the plot like we already know that you know what I mean like we knew that was gonna happen but like it didn't need 400 pages of that and I feel like when we got to the point where they were ready to not even ready to be in a relationship because it just it felt very like purely just like physical and very like not forceful but like it wasn't naturally happening and it wasn't like an emotional connection and that's what I wanted between the two of them like you have so much history I was waiting for them to like emotionally connect and like he was like in love with her like all this like grand gesture things but it just like fell flat for me and I was so excited because Lucian's been my favorite since the beginning of the first book but not anymore which makes me so sad I think this is my least favorite in the trilogy which literally hurts to say it just this one like felt long like her books are usually this thick for romances and I know a lot of times I'm like a romance shouldn't be that long and stuff but like when I'm reading her books they don't feel that long but this one felt long I don't know I was just really bummed about this and the first two books I read of the month put me into like a little bit of a slump because I was like okay we are not starting off great and these are two new releases that I was anticipating I was excited for going off of this I needed a book to really get me out of my mini little slump and the perfect one or at least I thought the perfect one was Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This is in a reading vlog. I think it's in the fall reading vlog. So if you guys watch that, you already know how I feel. This book is so many people's favorite book of the entire year. It's literally been hyped for so long. And it took me a while to read it. I will admit that. But honestly, I kind of like that I just recently read it because I have not a lot of time until the second one comes out. But this book didn't change my life. This book wasn't my favorite read of the year. It's not my favorite fantasy book. And I completely, oh, my tabs are still on the front if you're wondering because I did tab it. But I understand why a lot of people loved this book and enjoyed this book and thought it was like really, really good. Their favorite book of the year. And I think this is the perfect book if you're not into fantasy to start getting into fantasy and read this but there's also a lot more that are like that that I feel like I want to make a video on soon to recommend if you're not into fantasy if you like romance and you want that in a fantasy book but like easily like getting yourself into it but I think this is a good stepping stone into fantasy and I feel like that's what really happened like it blew up and people that weren't reading fantasy read this and were blown away because they don't really know too much about like what happens in fantasy books and stuff like that so completely understandable if you don't know what this is about if you haven't even read this yet it's basically takes place in this college town and the main girl's mom is kind of like the commander 
of what's going on. And there's a threshing day where the students have to choose which quadrant they want to go into. You can go into the scribe quadrant, you can go into the writer's quadrant, and the main character's mom tells her she has to go into the writer's and that's the most dangerous one. Some people don't make it out alive, some people don't make it back home. After the very first like thing they have to do, like you could basically die. Like it's very hard to do. So she goes through that, her sister's been through that one, like there's a lot of like family history there, that's why she has to do that one. So she's not prepared for it. She was gonna go into the scribe quadrant, but didn't happen. She goes to the writers and like when you get in fully, you go through all these training and all this stuff and then eventually you could like match to a dragon, but you have to be like basically mated to the dragon. So you get that and then there's also a main guy character, Zayden. You guys have all heard of him. I was expecting it to be like a lot more romance heavy by how much you guys are obsessed with Zayden. Like I thought Zayden was gonna be top tier. Not only saying I didn't like him, no, I was obsessed with Zayden. I have specific tabs for Zayden scenes. I had so many expectations in my head of how hyped it was, how hyped the characters were in the story that like I had high expectations and I think that hindered it a little bit, but also it was still good. I think that the pacing was a little bit slow and all of the training and stuff I think was a little bit dragged on for me personally. I enjoyed the ending. I did guess the ending, but like that's because I was told that it was crazy and stuff and I was just theorizing the whole time. It was still a fun read. I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed the dragons because I never, never read a fantasy with dragons, but I gave this one four stars. Like that's like my overall, I think I'm going to stick with that. I love, love, love fantasy books. This one is definitely top of some I've read and it was fun, but it's just not my absolute favorite fantasy, but it was really good because of how much you guys told me to read it and hyped it up. I did enjoy it, but yeah, I'm excited for the second one. I don't really have theories. Like I'm not like into the whole world. I'm not like dying to read the second one, but I'm excited. And I love so much how much people love this book. Like that just makes me happy. So not my favorite, but I think it was really, really good. So this is where the month kind of looks up a little bit because I read The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. It's my first book by her. It's basically kind of like a contemporary romance, but it has like almost like a paranormal, I would say, kind of twist on it. This is a girl who lives in her late aunt's apartment and her and her aunt, when her aunt was alive, had this incredible relationship. They like were always together. She looked up to her and she kind of raised her almost. And she told her these little ghost stories when she was younger, how the apartment that she lived in was kind of haunted. Sometimes it would slip into the past seven years, basically seven year slip. And one day that happens to her and there's this guy in her apartment. They're connecting. She's confused. She's freaked out. And it kind of flip flops between that and like that guy there and like the slip happening into present day, her like freaking out and seeing the guy again from then. And she's trying to see if like he remembers her, she remembers him. Like he falls into like her workplace almost. And it's so interesting. The storyline is so fun to go along just because that like seven year slip thing that's going on is entertaining and it's really interesting. The main guy character in here, I think his name is Ewan, a breath of fresh air, literally a breath of fresh air. He is so... I love him. This book feels like a warm hug. This book feels like a warm cup of coffee on a fall day and I literally am obsessed with it. I gave it 4.75 stars. I feel like this is more of like a almost literary fiction storyline about like the main girl character, like women's fiction of her trying to figure out like her life path. You do get the mix of the romance within that. I think if the romance was a little bit heavier, I would have given this a complete five stars. But other than that, it was so, so, so good. The little nickname he has for her, if you've read this, warmed my heart. Every time he said it, it just warmed my heart. They were so sweet. It was like so tender and so good. I absolutely loved this. It was such a fast paced read. I think I've read this in like a day. Like it is just so, so good. Highly, highly recommend if you have not read this yet or if it's on your radar, like you need to pick it up. It is so cute and so good. Then I finally completed the Prison Healer trilogy. This is The Blood Trader by Lynette Noni, the third and final book in obviously the trilogy. I literally love this book. I love this book. The first two books I gave four stars. This one, eight and left no crumbs. Like this one was so, so, so good. You follow the same characters almost, but this one has like a heavy found family aspect. And after reading the first two, you kind of like love the characters and like feel the found family. So while reading this one, you kind of have almost like a forced proximity with the found family. Like they have like almost like a quest that they have to go on together. So you have all of them together, like almost all time, but things have happened at the end of the second one into this one where it's like, there's a lot of tension and the tension, like I'm eating it up. I'm eating it up the whole time. And when you get to this one part in the book where everything just like, I can't say anything. I literally can't say anything, but just know I was like tearing up, crying. I'm obsessed. So good. I loved the ending. Everything about this, I love. This one literally ate so hard. Five stars. I'm obsessed. I love these characters. I love this world. Really sealed the deal on this trilogy for me. Like I, I love it so much. Then somehow I was incredibly I'm speechless. Lucky enough to get the art of Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. I think this came out yesterday. I'm filming this on October 4th. I think this came out on October 3rd. This is basically part of the world of the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy. That trilogy is its own trilogy. It's finished. It's completed. And that follows Wrath and Amelia. Wrath is one of the seven princes of hell and Amelia is a witch. And they kind of go on this journey together to find out what happened to her sister. This book follows Envy, one of Prince's brothers. And he's obviously one of the princes of hell. It takes place kind of in that world, but you also get the main character Camille. Camilla or Camille? I think it's Camille. 
Camilla and she lives in like the mortal world but he is now set onto this dangerous murderous game because he has to save his court. No one knows his court is in ruins but in order to save it he has to go on this game and obviously complete the game and it kind of follows into Camilla's world into Camilla. She's now wrapped up in this and they're doing it together almost but this one is new adult I'm pretty sure not young adult so this one has spicy scenes this one is not more graphic but like the scenes are more intense I guess you could say but this one was so fun. It's a really thick book I think it's like almost 600 pages like it's really really long but I think for good reason like sometimes when there's really long books I'm checked out or I think some scenes are dragged out or stuff. This one like I feel like every scene was just so good like I thought every scene was entertaining I was like on the edge of my seat figuring out what was going on with them. I gave this one four stars I think that the ending was kind of wrapped up really quick like I feel like if anything dragged out it was like the beginning and like understanding everything but then I feel like the end was wrapped up really quick but other than that I really 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 enjoyed it. I love the world of like the princess of hell I don't know why I just love it so much. I'm hoping pride gets his book like I need a pride book really bad I feel like I heard somewhere that that's the next one but I also could have made that up. I think it is if you guys know let me know but I'm so excited also if you're thinking about reading this and you're intrigued on this story you do not need to read the kingdom of the wicked trilogy to read this I will say if you read this and want to go back to that you definitely can't because it gives away huge plot lines in the third book of the trilogy so you technically could go back and read it but it really ruins a lot and I feel like the trilogy kind of gives way into how the princess of hell and how their magic works but also it kind of gets explained in this one like it's pretty easy to pick up on I think what's so fun also this cover is absolutely stunning and if you saw the Barnes and Noble edition it's pink and so beautiful so yeah that one was really fun then I read Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer this is the second book in the Renegades trilogy this one is pretty good if you don't know what Renegades is about it's basically like a dystopian sci-fi type of book the main characters all have different superpowers basically and they're all different which I think is really interesting and really fun like you can see how they all each use their powers when they have to and like what they do with them really really fun but you have the Renegades who's kind of like almost like the government they're kind of like the head of everything and they have like the main council and everything and then you have the Arch Enemies and that's part of where Nova our main character is from because back when she was younger the Renegades and the Arch Enemies were like against each other and no one knows that she's part of the rival superhero clan clan team group but she goes undercover in the first one to the renegades to kind of get intel on what's going on over there the end of the first one was kind of like a plot twist and i was really excited to see how that falls into this one it was the main point of this one but like i feel like it wasn't talked about enough do you know what i mean i give this one three and a half stars i was really excited to read this one i loved like the characters and the storyline and everything but i feel like the plot twist of the first one wasn't as in-depthly talked about in this one i don't know and i feel like something was brought up in the beginning of this that the renegades are like using and like all of that and i feel like that also wasn't like the biggest plot point ever and, like it was like they had these like huge things happening or like huge plot points they could have like really used as the storyline but it was kind of like mellow I don't know if that makes sense. And I feel like we got hints of romance in the first one and I feel like it kind of fell off almost in this one. This one just wasn't as good as I thought it was gonna be, but it wasn't bad. I think I just wanted more from it, but it was entertaining and it was fun. The superheroes are so fun and I'm excited for the third one because after reading this, there's like even more questions unanswered and I need to know how it ends, how everyone finds out everything. Like I just need to know everything. So I'm excited to finally finish this and see what unravels and what happens because so many questions I have for this book. So that's this one. Then I read A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I think this is a newer release. I think this literally just came out, but this is a fantasy, YA fantasy. Was it YA? I don't know if it's YA. This is kind of like a folky type of fantasy. It's basically about this girl who's in the architecture college. She wanted to go to the literature college, but she was not allowed to because women can't go into that. And they have this author who's written this like famous epic of sorts. She's idolized him forever. So she gets a chance to go to this author's house who he's passed away. So she gets to go to a late author's house and meet his son and kind of like fix it up since she's like in the architecture program and kind of help because it's on like this big cliff of water it's like getting ruined so she goes there and when she gets there she meets this young guy who's in the literature college and they're kind of like rivals at some points but you don't really get that you kind of just get she's like annoyed they kind of start working together to fix the house but they uncover stuff about the author and the rivals comes from him not believing the author and not believing everything the author has said and done so he's kind of skeptical but she's idolized this author so they're kind of like at heads with that but they start working together things are uncovered things get weird i gave this one two and a half stars i didn't love the storyline i think i'm not into folk fantasy and I feel like the writing in this one just wasn't my favorite I feel like it was a little surface level almost I feel like a lot was happening and a lot was like being brought up but like not explained you know what I mean like the epic and the author and like we we're just going through the story but like nothing was really explained at least for me like I got confused a lot and I feel like a more explanation would have helped that I think the ending of it kind of saved it for me the ending was kind of fun the beginning of it was a little bit slow when I just really didn't connect to the characters or the storyline so I didn't really care too much about what was happening or what was gonna happen like it wasn't my favorite I almost DNF'd it but I'm kind of glad I didn't the ending was pretty good 
but not my favorite read. But if you like a folky type of fantasy and like a mystery mixed in, it was good. I think that the main guy, Preston, kind of saved it a little bit. Like he was sweet and I really enjoyed him, but it was okay. Then I read My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. This one is a contemporary romance, but obviously vampires are involved. This book is like perfect for this October spooky season. If you haven't read it yet, it's really fun. It's about this girl who's getting evicted from her apartment and she needs like a place like immediately fast. She doesn't want to rely on her friends anymore for anything. So she goes on Craigslist, she finds this place and she thinks it's very weird because the place is put up for like $200 a month in this economy. She's like, How, why is it so cheap? But she doesn't make a lot of money. She kind of likes an artist and she goes to see the apartment and she takes it and it's kind of like this dark vibes. Think of literally like a vampire's house. Like that's the vibes it gives off. The main guy's a vampire, but she doesn't know that. He's very like interesting. He's very like old school. I gave this one three stars because I feel like the story was so, so fun. Finding out about like why he needs like a roommate and all this stuff. Them together, like she's a sunshine. He's obviously a grumpy vampire. So their dynamic was fun. The storyline was really fun, but I feel like the romance, I didn't really connect to. Like I did not see them romantically. I saw them platonically and that's okay because I enjoyed the story. I thought it was fun. And usually when I don't connect to the romance in a romance book, like I get annoyed and I don't like it, but I thought it was still fun. Like it didn't even bother me. So if you want to read this and you connect to the romance and the story, it's probably gonna be so, so, so good. But I just didn't love the romance in this. I also thought he acted so weird and like for good reason, it kind of explained why he acts the way he does. But when I think of vampires, I said this in the video where I read it, I think of Damon Salvatore. Like I think of like, not mean, but like almost like, like morally gray, but he was very respectful and he was very nice and polite. I don't know, it was very interesting. I also was kind of just annoyed. I mean, I know it's the premise of the story, but like when she starts moving into a $200 apartment with this weird guy who sleeps during the day and it's all dark and it's very creepy. Like not for a second would I think to ever do that. I was like, girl, I would be scared out of my mind. But you know, that was the whole point of the story, but it was good. It was fun. It was a fast pace. I think I read this in like, I think also a day. Like I really got binge this one. It's one of those reads that you can just read pretty fast. So if you want like a spooky little fun little rom com -y vampire mix story, like this is definitely for you. And then I read Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. This one is, I think a series of five books. This one's very popular. I feel like a few years ago, I think a lot of people read this like when they were in like, I don't know what age, maybe middle school, high school, but I did finally read it. I was very excited for this one because my favorite book of like all time right now is Powerless by Lauren Roberts, Obsessed. If you love Fourth Wing, I forgot to say this. If you love Fourth Wing, read Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I read it. Anyway, I'm not gonna get into that book because I talk about it way too much. So as I should though, because it's so good. Anyway, okay. I wanted to read this because I saw Lauren Roberts say she got inspiration from this book. I was like, I need to read this sometime. So I did. I can see the inspiration she took from this. This one is basically about, actually, why do I not remember? There's two groups of people in this world. There's reds and silvers and they both bleed that color. Like the reds that bleed red are like the lower caste. They work for the silvers and the silvers are the higher caste. They're the, the richer people and they bleed silver. They also have powers. That's why they're more elite. Well, then one day our main character, Mare, is taken to the royals to work for them and they find out that she has powers but she's a red. She's in the lower caste. So no red has ever had powers before. It's not a thing. Like you don't have red blood and have powers. So they freak out and now she's living with the royals. So I think in fantasies, it's so fun when the main girl has to go into like the castle and the kingdom and with all the royals. I think that's just so fun. I gave this one three and a half. I think I gave it four on Goodreads, but it was definitely a three and a half. It was good, entertaining. It was fun. I was interested in all of it. I wish the romance was more heavy in this one. I heard it gets heavier throughout the other ones. Plot twist in this is literally the blueprint for, if you've read this and you've also read what book I'm thinking of, this is very vague, but if you know what I'm talking about, about this is the blueprint for another book the end of this if you know you know but that kind of got me angry because I was theorizing the end of this because a lot of people were also saying in this one like the ending the plot twist the cliffhanger like you have to go to the next one I bought the second one before I even finished this and I was so annoyed when I read the plot twist of this because I was like this feels like a copy and paste it just got me a little bit annoyed I don't know like irrationally I was annoyed at it but the storyline was fun I do want to read the second one I want to see where this goes after the ending of this I enjoyed it I just wish the romance was like a little bit heavier because I expected it to be a little heavier because I feel like when the romance parts we got would have been so good but they were like cut off too short but it was good three and a half it was fun i finally finally fin actually can we start with a round of applause i feel like i deserve one for what i put myself <laughs> i'm so dramatic but like just give me a little bit of a a good old clap maybe a little congratulations because after months and months and months and months and months of saying i was gonna read this book Look what I have here. Look what we have in this wrap up. A Quarter Solar Flames by Sarah J. Moss. So here's the thing though. I completely listened to this. I don't think I read a single word in this book other than trying to find my spot in the book. The first half of this book, I listened to the graphic audio and that one was a really good. Like I wish every book had a graphic audio. It had different voice actors. It had sound effects, which some parts with sound effects was not fun. Like I was watching a movie in my head. But after that, it was like halfway through the book because the second graphic audio is not out yet. I downloaded the regular audio and I listened to the second half all on regular audio. So I did not read a wink of this book because every time I tried Tried to. I couldn't get into it. I didn't care. It was too long and I just feel really checked out from the series because I read this a while ago at this point and it's not my favorite series of all time. Like I'm not an Akatar like absolute lover. Completely understand and agree if you are. Like that is, it's a great series. Like I loved it but not my favorite. So I wasn't like the most excited to finally get into this because this is a thick book. Like 
it's a brick. I was excited though because this is Nessa's story. She is Feyre, the main character in these books, sister, and she's kind of has like things about her that are kind of unlikable when you see her in the point of views of these first books. And I honestly was more intrigued to see her story, what happened to her, like her kind of like grief and trauma. And that's what exactly what you get in this book. It's kind of like a whole story almost of her getting through what she's been through and kind of coming to terms with what's happened to her and like falling on people and like really trusting people again. And I really enjoyed seeing her story. Cassian, I think he's my favorite. Like I loved him. I loved how he understood Nesta. He understood what she needed. He didn't push anything on her. Like he was perfect. I loved him. He's got tattoos. My favorite bat boy. I did not rate this book. I still have to watch Carrie Can Read's video of her explaining the plot of this book. I literally just have nothing in me that wants to sit down and listen to it and understand it. Like, I listened to this book on the audio version. If you ask me something that happened in this book, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> like, I have some scenes in my head and like some plots, like a new character was introduced and stuff with that character and Nesta and everything. But other than that, the politics of this book, literally in one ear, out the other, out of the room. Like, I don't know anything. That's why I didn't rate this book. I feel like it was a disservice to rate this and give it a rating when I was wasn't really enjoying it. I felt like I was forcing myself to read it. Thing is, like, it was good. I like Nessa and Cassian. I love their stories. I love seeing Nessa's growth and everything. Like, I enjoyed it. It just felt like a chore to do. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Like, this is a book which I wish I could just, like, put on my head and get the knowledge. Like, I don't want to actually read it. <laughs> dramatic. I am so dramatic. I know she said that another book in the Akatar series and universe is gonna come out. Do I want to read it? Like, not really. I'll read some spoilers of it. Like, maybe I'll do that. But yeah, it was good. It was really long. Was it too long? Yeah, but I enjoyed it. I love Nesta's story and I loved Cassian a lot. Anyway, I did finish this, so thumbs up for me. So the last and final book that I read in September was Wildfire by Hannah Grace. I was so excited for this. Now, okay, Icebreaker is the first book in this little companion novel series. Icebreaker, it follows Nate and Stassi, hockey player and ice skater, and that's like their own story. And the main character in this book is Russ, and he's on the hockey team with Nate, and he is the goalkeeper. And the main girl is Aurora. I don't think you see her in the first book, like, at all. Like, she's kind of a new introduced character. You get her and her best friend in this one. So two of them go to the same school, the same school that Stassi and Nate go to and everything and they met at a party it's the end of the year it's like graduation but right before summer and they're having a party to say bye to all the seniors and stuff so they meet there and they have like a one night stand but she leaves the next morning not saying anything to him and just kind of like rushes out so they don't even get like he doesn't get like her full name or anything like it was just like a great night but like they don't know anything about each other so they both are actually camp counselors at this one camp like a few hours away from where their school is and they're both going there for their own separate reasons they get there and they see that each other are there and they didn't know that and it's just like this awkward thing going on because she left without talking he's like overthinking everything Everything. you get both other point of views and I loved Russ's character like he is like a golden retriever he's kind of awkward at times he's really shy he's not like the most confident but like he works on it throughout this book and it's just so sweet to see I loved Aurora as well like she was just like her own character like she I don't know like seeing what happened to both of these characters they kind of have issues going on that is very prevalent and heavy topics in this book but I enjoyed seeing that and I enjoyed reading about them I thought it was so fun I was kind of iffy on the whole camp scene the whole camp setting but I thought it was fun I think what I was worried about is the campers being too much and like being a lot of like the kids and having that like overpower it but it's really just about these two and I think that Hannah Grace does the most amazing job ever of doing like a found family like, especially an icebreaker like all the hockey players Stassi and her best friend like all them together it's just so funny like you want scenes of them same thing in this one you get new characters new camp counselors and like their little found family but you also get the characters from icebreaker in here and it's really great seeing like all your favorite characters together I will say in icebreaker like one of my main things about that one that I didn't enjoy was there was a lot of spice like it was like heavy like 60% of it was spice this one not like that so if you didn't like that as well or thought it was a little too much like this this one definitely is not as much as Icebreaker was. Like, it's just like a normal amount, I feel like, for these types of books. So, it was really good. I gave this one four stars. It wasn't my favorite book. It felt like there was like no plot. Like, we were just going with the story. There was like nothing like actually happening, even though there was like some stuff happening. I don't know. Like, I felt like there was no plot. It's definitely a good, like, fluffy romance book to throw in between fantasies or if you just need a book like this, like, no brain power romance. It was like that. But Russ was just so sweet. Like, he was such a cute, sweet, shy character, and I loved that. That was the last book that I read in September. I feel like I had a pretty good reading month. I read some really good books some books I've been waiting to read. I'm so happy I got those like out of the way and done and some new favorites and I'm really excited about my October TBR. If you guys did not watch my October TBR video, we have some really good books on there but also books that are just like on my radar for October. It's gonna be a really really good month. At least I hope so. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you did. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know your opinions on them and yeah let me know what you read in the month of September. Thank you guys for watching. Again I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you did and I will see you hopefully in the next one. Bye!